Vous pouvez venir. Vous venez.
Hello, good evening. Hello, everyone. Good evening, teacher. Good Hello. evening. Good evening. How are you today? Good evening. Good evening, teacher. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure greeting you guys. Well, I don't know. I would like to ask you, is it raining? Is it raining? Yeah. Yeah, it's raining, right? And part of the country is raining. No. It's not raining right there. Uh, rain of uh, una hora, yo veo. one hour ago. Wow. Yes, but uh, now, no, no rain. It's not, not raining. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's uh, interesting because in some areas it's actually raining. Um, but that's okay. So it's a pleasure to be with you guys this beautiful day. Especially because every day we have different challenges and different things that we always faced. Um, that overall motivation has to be important. Motivation, encouragement, always have to be an important part of our personal activities. And uh, I just want to ask you in a briefly way, guys, how are you today? So tell me, uh, share with us something interesting about this day, something interesting that you would like to socialize with us here. Yes. Uh, yes, a volunteer uh, about sharing your day. How's your day going? Yes. Don't be shy, participate. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Yes. Uh, oh, uh, my day. We don't see you. I don't know if you can turn on the camera. We don't see you. Uh, so, sorry, teacher. I, I drive. Oh, you're driving. Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. I can't. I can't. I can't. Hello? Oh, yes. We will. Uh, I listen to you. Uh, today, I travel it to Aguachapan. And I visit uh, restaurants. Uh, because I work into to sales. Uh, I visit uh, three restaurants. One is a uh, pupuseria y comedor maya. And other is uh, diamond restaurants. And I don't remember the name of the other restaurant. But it's very is very beautiful the, the travel because uh, it's very uh, no sé cómo se dice paisajes landscape uh, it's a beautiful landscape yeah. our Japan is is pretty only oh thank you so much really appreciate it for your participation Okay, someone else who wants to activate the microphone and says, you know what, my daily routine is like this. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Good evening to my teacher and all my classmates. Uh, I work in a small church in Japa. Uh, it's a small non-governmental organization, and I teach uh, musical instruments there, and I have been uh, teaching to some students to play guitar, to play bass, to play drums, and play, play uh, keyboard, 
uh, that's my daily routine. Wow, sounds very interesting. Thank you. Especially when we're talking about musical instruments. Yeah, it's very entertaining. And at the same time, it's art. Yeah, I like it. What is your favorite musical instrument? Um, I, uh, I play the guitar and this is my, my favorite instrument, but yeah. also the keyboard uh, and the bass. The bass, uh, what about the piano? Uh, piano or keyboard uh, are uh, ah, yeah. the, the same instruments, yeah. uh, but the, the piano is more acoustic than the keyboard. Interesting, thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. I would like to play the piano. I need to try. I actually got I, one. I would like to, to play to teach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Hell yes. My 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 root my routine now is have my my house my in my house um with my half family. And is the clearly um, clean and help uh, my son in your health is uh, it hot every uh, all day and um, out there. Uh, um boy boy um como se dice las verduras <laughs> vegetables veget vegetables uh or the the din dinner almuerzo lunch 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 okay lunch e after is meeting in Made it short, made it short, different uh, that some uh, the, the different room, different meeting and different person. Oh. Okay, thank you so much, Hector. Um, that was very interesting, you know, what you do in your daily routines, so that's very valuable. Thanks a lot. And also let's welcome to Miguel. Hi, Miguel. Hi, good evening. Uh, ¿Me escuchan? Yes, yes, we do. Okay. My daily routine, uh, I wake up at 6 a.m. and brush my teeth, I take my breakfast and we um, I go to the, the job and later I check my work area and then um, I take my break and later I I take my lunch and then uh in the evening, I take my breakfast at oh, so so 3 p.m. 3 p.m. And then I check uh, my work, work area. And later, I come back to my house and, and then I share with my family and watch TV and I eat my dinner, and then I uh, go to the bed. This is my daily routine. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Miguel. I really appreciate it. That was very interesting. You know, especially when we have a lot of things to do and we have to like organize our time, organize. That's great. Okay, thank you. Okay, who else? Okay, who's next? Uh, Israel. 
Hi, good evening. Hello, Israel. Welcome. How are you? Fine. Very good. Um, okay, my daily routine is a uh, job up um, saying a uh, God for new day and pray. Uh, then I take a shower, have, have um, breakfast, and go at the off to work. Mm. Sometimes I have um, meetings with um, national leaders. I return home to be uh, with um, how for my family. Um, I study English for night. Okay, Israel. Um, thank you so much. Um, and also we have Jocelyn Vasquez. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my daily routines. Um, I get up at six o'clock in the morning and I go to work at seven o'clock. I have a breakfast at um, 9 p.m. I have a lunch at 12 noon. And I return to my house at uh, 6 p.m. and I have a dinner at 8 p.m. and I study English from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. and I go to sleep at 11 p.m. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That was actually very interesting. Okay, someone else uh, would like to share about your daily routine? Me. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer, welcome. Uh, thank you. My daily routine is in the morning to take my daughter to a school and I return for home eh, ¿cómo se dice? A la, los quehaceres del hogar. I'm sorry, what, what do you say? Los quehaceres del hogar o las, las ah, cosas del hogar. Son chores, chores at home. Eh, um, chores. ¿Cómo? Perdón. Uh, aquí está en el chat, aquí está en el chat. Eh, ah. Chores at home. Son quehaceres. Chores at home. Yes. Okay, and take care of my baby. And in the afternoon, I go to family business and return home uh, for my classes. Oh. All right, that's, that's great. Jennifer, thank you so much. You had a busy schedule and it's very active and that's great. Especially because at night you have English class and after having a lot of activities. Thank you so much. Next. With me. Hi. Yes, Jose Fernando. Hi, hi. Welcome. Uh, my routine is um, I get up uh, at uh, 5 a.m. Um, then I have breakfast so far and uh, I am go to work later. Uh, when is it? Um, ¿Cómo se dice? 12, medio, eh, mediodía. At uh, 12 noon. At uh, 12 noon. 
Uh, I got a how with my family to have a lunch, a lunch in the afternoon. I uh, received in my class um, at um, 6 p.m. I go to church that I return to receive my class uh, for English. And then I do my homework and then I go to sleep. Finish. Thank you so much, uh, Jose. I really appreciate it. Um, that's very interesting too. Okay, one more, and because we need to like start with a different content today, uh, who is going to be the last one? <laughs> me, teacher? Yes, please. Um, it's a pleasure. Yes, tell me. Uh, good, good evening. Uh, in the morning, I go to work at half past six. And then I go all for lunch at one o'clock. In the afternoon, I teach a beer. And then I go home to have my coffee and to finish uh, with my class. And sleep. Finish. Okay, nice, Adriana. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so let's start today. And I just want to um, share with you the next topic that we just like had a, a brief uh, introduction, but we're going to go a little bit deeper with some grammar structures. And also we're talking about the, the comparative adjectives. We know that there are some uh, grammar structures that we uh, study for this one. And also we have comparative, um, well, superlatives won't be taken for this class, but the comparative will be the priority for this um, process. We use comparatives when we want to compare two things. And uh, that is uh, something very valuable about this. And uh, I need a volunteer for helping me to read the, the rule about comparatives. Who wants to help me to read? Me, teacher. Walter. Okay, Walter. Thank you. Okay. Uh, comparatives are used to show the different between two objects. Let's say that I have two cars, I have a little Toyota, and a big Ford. Uh, a comparative is used to show the different bit between the two. The four is big, so we can say this car is bigger than that one because the, this car is small. We can say that car is smaller than the other. To learn to use this, we need to learn five basic rules. Excellent. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So we can appreciate that we are used um, com uh, comparative uh, to show the difference, the difference between two objects, but not necessarily objects. Also could be people and also animals. And um, we understand that and we have the, the examples about two things and one is better than the other one, one is bigger than the other one. So we always compare and uh, we also will use adjectives. And I just want to ask you, what do you remember about adjectives? What are adjectives? ¿Qué son los adjetivos? Who wants to help me to, to explain it? ¿Qué son los adjetivos? Hi, yes, I tell me. Remember an adjective is a thing that we say about something to describe it. Okay, um, we use adjectives to describe, yeah. Especially people, animal and objects. 
and they they is, are they given a specific characteristic about things it's something important look at this we're going with that one um let's continue with the next one veamos aquí algunos ejemplos there are some rules that we are going to use like the ant is smaller than the the hippo you can see the differences between both the ant is smaller so we use the adjectives the first rule says that we used if an adjective has one syllable we add the ending er to the adjectives that's why we said that first it's lo que habíamos dicho al inicio right que cuando queremos hacer un comparativo, vamos a utilizar el adjetivo base, que en este caso sería small, plus er, equal, smaller than, más pequeño que, is harder than, is crazier than. So there are different uh, adjectives that we can use. I will use the chat to add more uh, general information here. For example, when we say uh, cold, you say colder. When we say uh, short, we have shorter. We say fast, we add a faster. When we use clean, we use cleaner. And also all of these adjectives in general, we add ER to maiden comparative. Entonces, a todos esos adjetivos generales, nosotros solamente le vamos a agregar ER para hacerlos un comparativo. So we say small, smaller, hard, harder, and also the ones we have here in the chat. And we can see the example about the ant is smaller than the hippo. Okay, let's see. Um, we could say a sentence using um, clean. My house is cleaner than yours, for example. So we can say my house is cleaner than yours. Y vemos el comparativo. Mi casa es más limpia que la tuya. Entonces vemos acá. Look at this. My house is cleaner than yours. Y usamos siempre el then porque el then nos va a indicar que nos compara una acción o una situación con otra. Tenemos aquí a faster. My car is faster than your car. And look at this. We use also a comparative. My car is faster than your car. Entonces la primera regla es esta. Cuando, eh, si ustedes se fijan, estos adjetivos solamente tienen solamente un, um, una sílaba. Entonces, nosotros le agregamos R para hacerlo la primera. This is the first one. Let's see the other one. Also, we have the rule number two. Look at this. This is very interesting. If, if one syllable adjective ends with a consonant, plus a vowel, plus a consonant, you must double the last consonant and then add ER. And also you can see the differences between the, the elephant and also the giraffe. You can see a huge difference, of course, but we know that, um, look at this, one second. Look at this. Vamos a ver, decimos acá, we are actually talking about one syllable. Tenemos a big. Si ustedes ven, la regla nos indica, en este caso, pues, que tenemos que agregarle una consonante en la que termina. Entonces, vemos ahí que eh, decimos big, bigger. And also, there is a restaurant with that name. Bigger than. The elephant is fatter than the giraffe. Fatter, que en este caso es gordo. Más gordo is fatter than the giraffe. So we can check that le agregamos una T más porque cumple la regla de el consonante vocal consonante. A eso es lo que nosotros eh, le llamamos este comparativo. Miren qué interesante. Eh, tenemos, por ejemplo, acá vamos a hacer una oración utilizando bigger. ¿Qué oración podríamos utilizar con big para que ustedes me ayuden? What sentence we can uh, right with big. ¿Qué oración podríamos utilizar con big? For example, the, house is bigger than mine. My house? 
or your house. Or oh, your house is bigger than mine. Okay, than, than mine, yes. Mm, Walter, pero ahí tiene que hacer la comparación, tiene que agregarle eh, el comparativo. Ok, eh, es que pensé que la quería que diéramos el ejemplo para transformarla en comparación. No, hagamos una, hagamos una comparativa. Ah, ah, yes, okay. yes, yes. Pero, pero eh, tengo una pregunta antes de eso. Eh, uh -huh. Estas reglas, bueno, quizás me voy a adelantar un poquito, pero no cambian en los tiempos. Por ejemplo, en futuro y pasado se mantienen. Es que, es que este es para una, una comparación. No nos habla de sí. tiempo. No nos Porque, habla de... Por ejemplo, yo pensaba, por ejemplo, eh, si digo... Eh, tú estarás más gordo de lo que estás hoy, por ejemplo. O sea, ya ahí me refiero a un futuro. O sea, si tú, si, por ejemplo, si tú sigues comiendo así, estarás más gordo o serás más gordo de lo que eres ahorita. Entonces, por eso me creo esa duda, que si no sé si cambiaba en los tiempos. En lo que sucede es de que, que este no se refiere tanto a tiempo, sino en comparaciones. Oh, Ahora okay. comparisons pueden ser usados en todos los tiempos. Eh, in the future, you will be better than me, for example. Entonces, Hola. ahí fue, no, no hay ningún Estoy inconveniente. Bien. So, it is, it is actually a convenience. No, pero que lo um, no The microphone. Bien. No sé, por ahí el micrófono. Alguien ah. tiene activo el micrófono. Who's the student? My goodness. No, Estamos no, en vivo. Bien. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, don't worry about it, guys. Wait, right. in this case, okay. thank you, que, yeah, it's a pleasure. Remember, acuérdense que aquí estamos hablando de, de comparación, no estamos hablando tanto de, de los tiempos. Se puede usar en los tiempos, sin duda. Entonces, tenemos, por ejemplo, tenemos wet. En wet significa mojado o húmedo. Entonces, decimos, my uh, shirt is wetter than yours. Mi camisa está más eh, mojada o húmeda que la tuya. Es wetter than yours. Tenemos también la palabra hot, el adjetivo hot. ¿Qué significa hot? My dog is fatter than the street dog. Ok. That's ok. Nice, Israel. Good. Hot. Um, El Salvador. We're talking about the country. El Salvador. El Salvador is um, hotter than. Um, El Salvador is hotter than Canada. Okay. okay. Uh, look at the chat. Look at the chat. So El Salvador is um, hotter than Canada. Decimos que El Salvador es más eh, caliente que Canadá about the weather conditions. So tenemos también thin. ¿Qué significaría thin in Spanish? Delicado. Delgado. Delgado. You're thinner than my uh you're thinner than my brother. And we can see here you're thinner than my brother. La Paz is hotter than San Salvador. Okay. My coffee is hotter than your coffee. Okay, great. And also we have Adriana, Jocelyn. Yeah, great. Any other statement that we can uh, use for these examples? Okay, so we can uh, see, yes, uh, yeah. My book is older than yours, book. Um, I'm sorry, my books are? Is older. My, my book yours. is older than yours. Yours, book, no. Um, older, but you say older? Um, viejo. Uh-huh, 
And, aunque este older no entraría en esta regla, sino en la, en la regla 1, donde usted solamente le va a agregar er. Okay. Ya, que, ajá, ya que este no tiene la, la característica de consonante, vocal, consonante, porque este comienza con una vocal y dos consonantes. Entonces no aplica para la regla 2. Usted solamente le agrega una er. That is the rule. It's um, clear this rule. ¿Está clara esta regla? Oh, sure. there, yes, tell me. Yes. Uh, bueno, por lo menos yo creo que sí está un poco clara. Tal vez la regla 1, si la puede explicar en español, porque eh, no logré captar todo en inglés. La 1. Um, fíjense que en realidad la regla 1 eh, debería de ser la última, porque las otras reglas nos van a indicar eh, ciertos, ciertas características. Pero la regla 1 prácticamente nos dice de que lo usamos. We use the adjectives que solamente tengan una sílaba. Le vamos a agregar er. That is the rule. Una sílaba. Ajá, una sílaba. O sea, adjetivos en general, adjetivos cortos, le vamos a agregar er. Esa es la, la regla general. Porque la regla 2 también es solo de una sílaba, pero cumple como una estructura la palabra. Así es, que tenga que, 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 tenga que, que llevar es solo... Uh -huh. Consonante, sílaba, consonante. Eh, consonante, vocal, consonante. Ah, ok. Sí, sí, okay. Consonante, vocal, consonante. Entonces, ya ahí ya, la regla ya diferenció. Y si se fijan, el adjetivo es súper pequeño. Entonces, vamos con la tercera regla. En rule number three. So, let's see. En... Vamos a ver. Adriana, help me to read the rule, please. Okay. Rule three is an adjective and with A. Why? Um, why remove the Y and uh, Alvier? I hear. I I am happy. Why you're happier than I funny? Uh, I hear funny than the girl is happier than the duke. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Adriana. I appreciate it. Okay, the rule three says if an adjective ends with uh, Y, we had to remove Y and I and not I. En este caso, esta regla nos dice que si un adjetivo termina en una Y, we have to remove it. Tenemos que eliminar la Y y le vamos a agregar una I latina más el qué? ER. Tenemos happy, H-A-P-P-Y. Entonces, como está el Y, lo elimino y le agrego la I latina y luego le agrego la R. Y ahora va a decir happier than o oh, funny, funnier than. The girl is happier than the dog. Algo creativa la oración, pero bien. Eh, it's you say happier because we are talking about this one. Veamos otros adjetivos que podemos agregar. Look at some other adjectives that we can Um, ¿Cuál es el? What's the meaning of IE? Pues no tienen ningún significado. Es como un ejemplo, like examples. Ajá. Bossy, bossier. Yes, excellent, Jocelyn. Also, we have a. Uh, my house. My house is my house is bigger. Is um, we could say dearier. La palabra dearie que significa sucio. Entonces voy a eliminar la Y y le voy a decir My house is dearer than your house. Being a little bit creative. <laughs> so my house is dearer porque la palabra dirty o deary es sucio. Entonces termina con una Y y se la eliminamos. Y vamos con pretty. Oh, my sister is the, instead of pretty prettier, vamos a decir bonita, my sister is, is prettier than, than she or than her. 
My sister is prettier than she. Look at this one. Eh, para decir bonita, we say pretty. Entonces, como termina en una griega, we add why. So we say prettier. And then we have another example is ugly. Ugly. Um, this row is uglier. This row is uglier than that one. Este dibujo es más feo que ese. Entonces vemos como usamos el ugly y ahora ya no va a decir ugly, sino que es uglier. Look at the examples. Okay, to interact with this exercise, um, quiero que escriban unas oraciones eh, acá para ver cómo nos quedan con esta regla. Um, far. Ajá, es further. Sí, es, es cambia, cambia un poquito. Ya, yeah, más lejos es further. Ese es un adjetivo irregular. Um, sí, es que la regla 1 es general. Ok, vamos. Necesito que me ayuden a escribir oraciones utilizando la regla 3. Excellent. Tenemos angrier. Very good. My sister is angrier than my brother. I'm happier than yesterday. Okay, cool. My mom is bossier than my dad. Look at these sentences are excellent. My dog is not noisier than your dog. Excellent. Thank you so much. I actually, I was reading, I was reading the, also the sentences and are pretty good. I think it's not a problem to, uh, to know this rule number three. Um, la clave es saber que termina con una Y para hacer el cambio y le agregamos una Y latina más R. Muy bien. Vamos a pasar al siguiente punto. Let's check the next one. Vamos a pasar al siguiente punto. Eh, regla cuatro. Le vamos a pedir a José, Josset. José eh, Daniel, que nos ayude con la regla 4. Please, help us read. Rule 4. If an adjective has two syllables or more, we how? A. Um, a. J. Can I decor? More by four. Decor. I the adjectives and with a a you will only the gors 
more if it was three syllables or more. A is beautiful, more, um, more beautiful time. A E expensive, more, more expensive time. Satisfactory, more, more satisfactory time. The butterfly is more beautiful than to throw. Thank you so much. This is the rule number four. Is that if an adjective has two syllables or more without why, then we add the word more. Aquí ya las tres reglas anteriores, the first three rules, um, are giving us like the chance to, to use ER. La regla cuatro ya no vamos a utilizar ER al final para hacer el comparativo, porque los adjetivos solamente tienen una sílaba. Ahora, los adjetivos son más extensos, are bigger, y ya no van a ir acompañados de un ER, sino que vamos a utilizar more. More va a ser la, la función de ER, y hay adjetivos que tienen tres sílabas, por ejemplo, beautiful, tres sílabas. Y siempre vamos a utilizar el then. Por eso dice, the butterfly is more beautiful than the frog. Entonces vemos que beautiful es un adjetivo largo. Y antes le agregamos el more para hacerlo un superlativo. Está súper sencilla esta regla porque identificamos eh, el tamaño de los adjetivos. Ya no son adjetivos cortos. Eh, veamos. Uh, let's see some examples. Let's, let's try with... Uh, some examples about this rule because it's very interesting to um, check some rules. We have some other um, adjectives like um, she is more, she's more intelligent. She's more intelligent. Think about some other statements too. Um, oh, she's more intelligent than he. Y vemos ahí el, el comparative, right? Tenemos también expensive. That cell phone That cell phone is more expensive. Vamos a utilizar otro adjetivo largo, expensive. Than this one. That cell phone is more expensive than this one. Este, este celular es más costoso, es more expensive than this one. Y vemos ahí el comparativo. This movie is more interesting. than the, that one. This movie is more interesting than that one. Esta película es más interesante. This landscape is more beautiful than this one. Okay? Nice, Camilo. That's interesting. What else? ¿Qué más podemos agregar ahí? What else we can add? Okay, uh, Chinese is more difficult than English. Okay, makes sense. Uh, she's more attractive than he, yes. Okay, uh, this book is more necessary than the other. Okay, escribamos otros ejemplos, more examples.
uh, it says um, uh, some, some, some activities in the, in the world can be, ahí, ahí tenemos que agregarle el be, can be more dangerous. Ahí, dangerous, eh, la palabra dangerous. Muy bien. The city is more dangerous than the last year. This city uh, now is more dangerous than the last year. La, la ciudad hoy en día puede agregar la palabra nowadays. Nowadays, para decir hoy en día. Look at the chat. The boy is more uh, tall. En este caso, tall. Eh, Adriana, hay que modificar esa oración. No sé si quiere poner alto. Eh, acuérdese que tall, eh, como es un adjetivo corto, solo le va a agregar e -D -E -R. Taller. Y no tiene que ir more. Teacher, entonces en ese solo vamos a utilizar adjetivos largos. Sí, es lo que les comentaba en esta regla. Solo tienen que llevar de dos sílabas para arriba. Cuando, cuando es una sílaba, solo le va a agregar una ER. Es de, es de la regla 1, ¿verdad? Ajá, es la regla 1. Correcto, ahí está, tiene que ser taller. Entonces, nunca vaya a utilizar more con un adjetivo que solo tenga una sílaba, porque está autom automáticamente equivocado. Y es un, un error de muchos eh, speakers eh, que, con, que confunden la regla 1 con la regla 4. Entonces, uh, es importante. Bien, vamos con la siguiente, because it actually was clear. Uh, la regla 5. There are few sections in English. Eh, justamente lo que hablábamos, hay algunas secciones, por ejemplo, hay unas palabras que son bien específicas, que esas usted no le va a agregar ni er, ni more sino que ya tienen una estructura propia. Por ejemplo, good, el adjetivo good, el comparativo es better. Um, tenemos, por ejemplo, bad, el comparativo es worse. El, el far, porque por ahí me escribían farther y me ponían further, pero el, el further es el superlativo. El comparativo es farther y el adjetivo base es far. Tenemos también, por ejemplo, little. Little, eh, el comparativo es less. El de little, el comparativo es less. Y el de much, por ejemplo, el comparativo es more. Entonces, eh, y de ahí los demás que están ahí, son los más comunes cuando nosotros nos referimos a los excepciones. A este se le llama adjetivo irregular porque este no sigue la, la regla de, del ER o el more, sino que ya el adjetivo tiene su estructura propia. ¿Está clara esta regla? ¿Yes? Yes. Sí, no hay, no hay donde perderse porque simplemente solo estudie, la solo recuerde que good va a ser better, bad va a ser worse, far va a ser farther, little va a ser less, and much va a ser more. Es, es, son casos aislados. Y aquí tenemos algunos. Eh, Toyota is smaller than the Ford. The Ford is bigger than the Toyota. The Ant is smaller than the Hippo. Y vemos ahí algunos ejemplos. Quiero que pensemos en este momento... Tenemos unos minutitos para completar estos ejercicios. Usted va a ver el adjetivo. You will see the adjective and you have to select. Eh, si le va a agregar more o solo le va a agregar er. Eh, así que vamos a darles unos minutitos. Five minutes to complete it. Así que lo completamos in, in silence. Y luego pues eh, vemos las respuestas. Let's go.
Okay, so I think because of the time, we are uh, going to like share the answers here. And uh, I know that some of you have written some possible answers. We go with the first one. Yeah, thank you to, well, Israel. Israel ya tiene sus respuestas. Okay, um, the number one, you can, you can, we can say orally. Podemos hacerlo eh, de manera así. Sharks are more, ¿cuál sería la respuesta? More no. dangerous. More yes, dangerous. more dangerous. Dangerous. More dangerous. Okay, more number two, dangerous. William is? No. More famous. famous. Yes, more Christopher. famous than Christopher Marlowe. What about number three, Henry? It's more, it's more, more awesome minded. minded. Yes, that's wow. correct. Yes, uh, that's right. Excellent. What about the number four, Tom? Tom is more selfish. Tom is more selfish. Yes, more selfish. Yes, more selfish. I'm sorry, uh, selfish. Sorry for the misspelling. And number five, he is. But he father. is father. Than he father. Is yes, okay. is father. Yes, is father. Then he used to be last year. Eh, él es más gordo de lo que él solía ser el año pasado. Entonces ahí vemos que está más gordo. Dice. Okay. Um, number six, Andrew seems to be. Slimmer. Slimmer. Yes, slimmer. Yes, slimmer than he was two months ago. Number uh, seven. Uh, I'm sorry. More. 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 Impatient. More. 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 Patient. I'm sorry, what, what is the what is the word? Seven. More impatient and younger. More impatient young, more younger. Uh-huh. More impatient nowadays. Uh-huh. Okay. And y ahí decíamos la otra, eh, younger. Yes, younger. 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 Le agregamos la ER. Younger. Yes. Okay. And I have a question. Yes. As it were, uh, John is um, one syllable. So, solo una syllable. Yeah, in this case, this is taken as, as one syllable, according to, to grammar. John, okay. Younger. Um, number eight, our town is? More attractive. More attractive. Yes, more attractive. More attractive. Yes, Tom is number nine. More, more impulsive. More, more impulsive. More impulsive. Uh, number 10, this point is? More, more, more pathetic. More pathetic. Yeah, more pathetic. And uh, the next one is, um, your house is? More beautiful. More, more, beautiful. more beautiful, yes. And the last one, his room is? Darker. Is darker, yes, porque solamente tiene una sílaba. Muy bien. Um, y así vemos las, las reglas. We can appreciate the rules about these grammar structures. So it's a little bit very interesting to practice. Veo que pues han tenido el dominio de las eh, de los contenidos y eso es bueno. So that's mean that you have understood. Es cuestión de que podamos seguir practicando eh, los con los ejercicios. We can practice the exercises and we will have a domain about this one. Luego de la práctica, pues automáticamente eh, nosotros vamos a ir viendo eh, cuándo es, cuál usamos es pura práctica. It's about practice because you know the rules. And well, before we finish, don't forget that eh, estamos trabajando esta semana lo que es pues la sección 3 que es how much, how much is it? Y el meter that is uh, estas dos partes 
para que pues la siguiente semana trabajemos de section 4 y section 5. Entonces, eh, pudieron ver la indicación que tenemos que terminar los ejercicios de la plataforma porque es un requisito. Así que pues, we have to work and complete the exercises. Uh, something okay. else before we finish? Algo más antes de concluir? It's clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, it's Good a night. pleasure. Thank yeah. Thank you. Have a beautiful night to all of you Thank guys. You. Good night. Good night, everybody. You too. Thank oh, you. Okay. Good night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. It's a pleasure. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.